Sometimes at this time of year, the weather can be a little bit not ideal for getting you excited about going out to take photos. And especially if you do landscape photography, it can get a little bit old, the constant gray, the constant overcast skies. Yes, it can be good. You can get nice stuff out of it as well but it's not always the most exciting. So that's why we're gonna talk about long exposure photography, because that's something you can do pretty much any time. Yes, it works really well with beautiful sunsets. Yes, it works really well with all kinds of light, actually, but it's something you can go out and do, and it's something a little bit different that we can all practice pretty much at any time. Let's talk about it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new fresh photography tutorial. That one was a bit much. We've got to rein them in. This week we're talking all about long exposure. Now we're going to talk about what it is, what you need, how to do it, and what kind of stuff you can get when you actually go out and do long exposure photography. So let's start off with what exactly is long exposure photography. Well, essentially we're gonna be letting that shutter stay open for much longer than we normally would when taking a photo. We're talking about a second, five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, it can really be as long as you want. And this is gonna achieve a couple of different things. Number one, it's gonna let a lot of light in to hit that sensor. And then number two, this is going to smooth out any motion in that photograph. Now that means you wanna be keeping the camera nice and still, but it means that any motion within the frame, let's say water, waves, something like that, is gonna be completely smoothed out. If you look at this photo of the sea, this is taken on a tripod, but with a faster shutter speed, as you can see the waves are all sort of frozen in motion, but then look at this photo, exactly the same spot, different look to it because we've got a much longer shutter speed. So it smooths out the motion of the waves and gives you this really interesting effect. Now it works really well with water, but this really works with anything that is moving. So that could be something like water, it could be clouds in the sky, it can even be people in the street. Now depending on how long you leave that shutter open, will depend on the look of the photo. For example, if you take a picture of people in the street with something like a five second shutter speed, you will still see those people, but they'll be moving and they'll be blurred and it'll be quite an interesting shot. If you do it with 30 seconds or even 60 seconds, you're probably going to pretty much eliminate the people from the photo. It's going to have smoothed out that motion so much that pretty much those people will be invisible. That can be a really interesting way of capturing a street scene and give you a slightly different look to your photo. Now the same goes for water. Let's take an example of a waterfall. If you take a shot of a waterfall with a nice fast shutter speed, you're gonna freeze that water as it comes down. If you take it with a slower shutter speed, you're gonna really smooth that out and get some nice sort of silky look to that water. If you take a look at these waterfalls, this was taken on pretty cloudy days, so the light is nothing special, but what's interesting in the photo is the motion of the water which is captured with a longer shutter speed to allow you to really see the motion of that water as it comes down. It just happens to also look very pretty as well. So what are you gonna need to do long exposure photography? Well, of course, number one, you're gonna need something to steady that camera. Now, the obvious choice is a tripod. You can balance it on something else. And I've done that as well when I didn't have a tripod on me and I wanted to take a shot. But the best option is always a tripod. It's gonna keep it nice and secure. I like to take out my nice sturdy, big tripod because it just means the camera is gonna stay nice and still when I take that photo. You you don't want the camera to move at all because if it does, that's gonna introduce blur into the overall photo, which you don't want. Little bonus tip there, I like to use a two second timer when I take the photo because that way it eliminates any kind of camera shake from me pressing the shutter. Of course, apart from a camera and a lens, you're also gonna need a way to darken the exposure. If we leave our shutter open for let's say 20 seconds, that's letting a lot of light in and unless you do something about that, your photo is gonna be completely overexposed. Now there's a few different ways you can do this. Of course, ideally in terms of camera settings, you might wanna stop down your aperture, something like F11, even F16, something like that's gonna work really well to just help control that exposure a little bit. Of course, you probably want to use the lowest ISO you can. So for most people, that'd be ISO 100. But unless you're shooting when it's already quite dark, you're probably going to need another way to actually darken that exposure. Now that's where something like this comes in handy. This is a neutral density filter or an ND filter. This is actually a variable ND filter so I can twist it and change how dark it is. But to be honest, for long exposure photography, you probably just want a solid ND filter. Now that'll come in different stops. You could get an eight stop ND filter, for example, or 10 stop ND filter. The higher the number of stops 
on the ND filter just means the darker it's going to be, which means the darker it's going to be, the longer you can leave that shutter open. It's essentially like sunglasses for your lens. It's gonna just darken the front of your lens. It just pops on the front and it's gonna make it easier to do something like long exposure. Now, of course, that only applies if you're doing this in the light. And I mentioned you could also do this in low light or in darker situations. And this can actually be a great way to expose for a darker sky, whether it be stars, which we've talked about in previous tutorials, or just a little bit of time after sunset. If you can pop the camera on a tripod, you can get some beautiful shots without introducing loads of noise through using a higher ISO value because you can actually use just a longer shutter speed. For the best results, you wanna find something with motion that you can capture in this way. Now, I've talked about water. That's a super obvious one because it just looks really good and it's generally pretty easy to go and find either the sea or a river or a lake or something where you can just smooth out that water. It works particularly well with the sea because you get the waves crashing. So you get this kind of almost misty effect around kind of rock and cliffs and stuff like that. That can look really good. Clouds in the sky, of course, if they're moving at a reasonable speed, you can get them to kind of streak across the sky, which can look really nice, almost give you a painterly effect. People moving around can look really good as well. So for example, if you have a busy train station or a busy area with lots of people moving around, trying out a long exposure shot in that situation can give you a really interesting creative effect. It's a little bit trial and error as to how long you should have that shutter speed be. For example, with the waterfall or with the sea, I like to pretty much go as long as I can, as long as my exposure will allow me to go for. So that's probably 20 or 30 seconds. But if I was going for a shot of people in the street, I might try something more like five seconds, even three seconds, even one second, just to see what that looks like. It depends how much you want to smooth out the motion. If you want to smooth it out completely, then you go for a longer shutter speed, which is no problem when it comes to water because it's constantly moving. But if you still want to keep a little bit of an idea of what was there, the shape of the people, that sort of thing, you probably wanna go for a shorter shutter speed, so one second, something like that. Really, you wanna be experimenting, seeing what works for you, and seeing how it goes. But ultimately, it's a reasonably easy thing to try out. Tripod, camera, lens, ND filter, and there's lots of things that you can get creative with when it comes to it. I'd love to hear if you have any tips of your own, pop them down in the comments and let me know because there's loads of stuff that you can shoot in this kind of way. And I'd love to hear if you've got any interesting stuff you've shot with long exposure to get a different look. Let me know. Of course, you can check out a full list of all the stuff we use for these photos, including the ND filters, by checking the links down in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. There's new content all the time. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.